August the Monster Slayer. There were always monsters for August to slay. No one knew where they came from, but, just like the rocks in the fields, they would seemingly pop out of the ground, start terrorizing any good citizen that happened past them, and generally make life in the countryside miserable. For most people, they were a nuisance at best, and a terror at worst. For August, they were his livelihood. Everywhere he traveled, whether in the forest, mountain, or plains, he carried his monster slaying kit. It consisted of a battered but serviceable sword, a suit of chain-backed leather armor, and a shield that had seen more coats of paint than August had seen years. With it, he traveled the land, going from village to village, looking for jobs, and things to kill. One day, on the path from one tiny village to the next, when the sun shone strong and beat upon the back of his cloak, and the trees rustled in the cool breeze, he sat down to take a nap in the shade of a trunk. It had been a long day, and he expected to reach the next village by sundown, but he wasn't in such a hurry that he could pass up a rest on the tranquil path. Soon, he fell asleep. When he woke up, he jumped up in surprise. There, leaning on him, sleeping, was the most peculiar girl he had ever seen. Shock white hair flowed down past her eyes, over which she wore black tinted spectacles. A black coat covered her entire body, from toes to fingers to the tip of her nose, so only the skin around her cheeks could be seen. And what skin it was, pearly white, almost ghostly, translucent, giving off a glare in the sunlight. August marveled at her. Who is she? He thought to himself. After considering a few options, he chanced to look up. Ah! He said. The sun had already sunk low in the horizon. Time to get going. He muttered. He got up, and stole one last glance at the sleeping girl. Should I wake her up? But she was sleeping so peacefully, at rest with the world. August hated the idea of waking her up. She did look beautiful, as she slept, the setting sun casting her pale face in sharp contrast against her coat. August sighed. The girl needed to wake up. It was getting late, and it was dangerous outside at night time. August knelt down and pushed her shoulder. Hey, you there? Wake up! The girl stirred. She shifted from one shoulder to the other, leaning against a tree. August pushed her again. Wake up! It's dangerous out here. The girl opened her eyes. August could barely see them through her sunglasses. She pushed them up, rubbed her eyes, and slid them back down. August watched her. The girl said nothing, only gathered up her coat and stood up. August stood up with her. The girl turned aside and began to walk down the path. August looked at her go, and then shrugged. The girl looked over her shoulder. Thank you. August scratched the back of his head. No problem. The girl turned and walked away, in the direction opposite the village. August turned around and headed towards the village. The sound of his sword clanking against his shield gave him a comfortable feeling inside. Still, the thought of the girl troubled him, until he reached the walls of the village. August. The gateman called. You're back. The village was called Numerville by its inhabitants. Inside the wooden palisade, a collection of a dozen hovels sat scattered about. August sensed something off, as he walked into the main square, a frown here, a sulking mother there. The town elder came out to greet him. He was a graying man, leaning on a cane, with a crooked back and a lumpy forehead. Anything I need to take care of? August asked. The town elder's face was one of gravity. A witch. August didn't respond. Instead, he surveyed the village. Now, he could see. That sulking mother was sick. The frown was followed by a cough. The town elder bowed his head. She has cursed our water for more than a month now. There is nothing we can do, we have tried everything. August shook his head. No. He let the word sit for a moment. I don't do humans. The town elder raised his head. You must help us. We have no other solution. You are our last hope. A crowd had gathered around them. A bulky man, with woodcutter's arms, stepped out. 
He had a square jaw and dull eyes. She's not human, he said. The town elder seemed as surprised as August. August furrowed his brow. What do you mean? he asked. It's eyes, said the woodcutter. They're like fire, red and evil. I saw them for myself. August considered this for a moment. The town elder gave him a hopeful glance. Do you swear this is true? August asked. The woodcutter nodded his head, his chin bobbing. There were many monsters that took the form of humans, and some might have even been said to have red eyes. But a witch. Perhaps they are mistaken, thought August. Though I should at least check. In any case, it wouldn't do to stand where he was all day. He turned to the woodcutter. Where did you see it? Up at the top of the hill nearby, the woodcutter pointed, in that direction. I was cutting down wood to fix Gender's barn after the fire. The woodcutter trailed off. You can kill it, can't you? August shrugged. I can certainly try. He turned to the town elder. Let's discuss payment. The elder tensed. His eyes grew shifty. Sixty coppers. August shook his head. That's what I usually get for killing a marsh rabbit. Three silver pieces, no less, for this witch. At which the elder cringed. Fine, fine, I'll make it two pieces. The elder said. We need to keep some money, you know. We can't have you gutting us dry. I'll go down to two silver and fifty copper. Only if they're capital mint. Fine, gouge us if you must, but we need that witch gone. You'll get your money when the job is done. August considered this, then nodded. Fair enough. He adjusted the shoulder on his pack, and prepared to leave. As he walked out the gate, a young girl chased after him, a green rag doll in her hand, bouncing in lockstep with her footfalls. Her name was Benny. She looked to be perhaps nine, with a serene face and pigtails that could be called childish. Uncle August. Uncle August. She called, her small voice carrying out across the courtyard. August stopped, and waited for her to come to him. When she did, out of breath, dust on her forehead, August hoisted her up onto his shoulders, placing her in the spot between his sword and his neck. How have you been, Benny? He asked. Benny said, as she considered. I got a new doll. Do you want to see? Sure. What's her name? The doll's dirty green cloth covered his eyes. It smelled like mud, and faintly of perfume. It's a he, not a she, dummy. August walked around the courtyard, making sure to duck under awnings so Penny didn't hit her head. Okay, fine. What's his name? Henry. Penny stated, simply. He's my new best friend. In the distance, a woman's voice called. Benny. Dinner time. August turned towards it. In the doorway of a hovel, a pretty woman in a simple apron stood holding a broom. Penny waved to her, and the woman waved back. Go on, now. August said, as he let Penny down. Your mother is waiting. Penny huffed, and looked back up at August. You'll come back, right? After beating that evil witch? August looked into the distance. If she really is evil, I'll beat her, and come back. He looked towards Penny, and only saw her back, halfway across the courtyard, the green doll trailing behind her. A smile crept across his face, as he turned to leave the village. Once outside, August switched gears. He called upon his green blood ability, which allowed him to communicate with monsters, and spread his consciousness out into the world. The ability ran in his family. Its origins were a mystery. August walked along the path towards the spot where the monster which had been sighted, running over in his mind what it might be. His plan of action would differ depending on the type of monster. It could be a mother worry, he thought. They looked like humans, and even had red eyes. No, no, no. If it was, I would already have known it. Mother worries broadcasted their presence with an unmistakable screech. Plus, the woodcutter had come back from his encounter alive, which would have been very unlikely had the monster been a mother worry. It could be a false person. 
false people were monsters that could take on the forms of humans, and could even talk like humans. They were shapeshifters, and it was said that they were the most intelligent of all monsters, perhaps even more so than humans. It was good that they were few and far between, and that they preferred taking the form of trees and snakes and other more devious creatures. But can they have red eyes? August asked himself. Surely they must be able to. August stopped. He stood at the top of a hill, in the center of a moonlit glade. There was a tree only half cut down at the edge. August was sure that this was the place the woodcutter had spoken of. He calmed himself, and let his green blood ability flow. His heartbeat drowned all other noises. Deep inside of himself, something stirred, something that pointed. Nowhere. There were no monsters nearby, and there hadn't been for some time. Could the woodsman have been lying? But no, there was his axe, laying abandoned, shining in the moonlight. Something must have scared him. August checked his surroundings. He began a thorough search, as if he were hunting a deer, instead of a monster. He looked for tracks, and didn't have to go far. There, in the middle of the glade, were footprints that were definitely not the woodsman's. They were light, as if the walker had weighed no more than a kid, and sold with strange patterns that August could barely make out. Writing? August followed the tracks down the hill, the other side from the village, to the river bank that passed by the village, and up the river. He came upon a cave, hidden in a jumble of rock. A flash of white stole his attention, and he looked up. There, hanging on a branch drying, were clothes, and a robe, a heavy one that drooped down like a curtain. August narrowed his eyes. Monsters don't wear clothes. He had a vision of coins slipping out of his palm. He glanced at the cave again. Perhaps. He walked closer, and peered inside. It was dark, too dark for him to see. He calmed himself again, and checked for monsters, allowing the beating of his heart take over clear. He ducked his head under the cave's entrance. The world shimmered, and he popped into in a brightly lit room, a large one, that looked like the inside of an alchemist's shop. A table stood in the center, piled high with books, ingredients, gadgets, and all sorts of paraphernalia. Around the edges hung shelves topped with ornate glassware that ran in tubes all around the wall. Colored smoke drifted around, flowing up a chimney assisted by a wooden fan that ran of its own accord. In the corner, hunched over a bottle, a black-robed figure made busy. August tried to do something, anything, but before he could, the figure swept around. Her red eyes were what caught August first. They were fair, and wise, and not evil at all. The girl had a nice nose, freckles, and a slim mouth at the moment curved down into a scowl. Her skin glowed pure white skin, white as the moon on a summer night. Oh, it's you, she said. She wrapped her robe tight around her body, possessively. I, I, August couldn't speak, he was so surprised. She's a witch? You, you don't look much like a witch. The girl moved closer to August. How nice of you to come visit me. Let me ask, how did you get in here? My house was supposed to be invisible. The girl stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with August, and looked up at him. The top of her head perhaps reached his chin. Are you a witch? August asked, his mind still too muddled to do anything. The woman raised one eyebrow. You haven't answered my question. How did you get in here? There. There were clothes outside, hanging. So I decided to check the inside of the cave. The girl frowned. Oh. That. She put her hand to her chin. I knew it was a bad idea. But my clothes were wet. Maybe I should have used that drying spell. Her eyes clouded over, lost in another world. They roved over and stopped at August's sword. They lit up. Can I see that? She held out her hands. At a loss for what to do, August nodded. He took his sword and handed it to her. Hilt first. Idiot. He thought immediately. You just gave away your weapon. He reached to grab it back, but stopped before taking hold of it. The girl held it in both hands, 
cradling it like a baby. The folds of her robe dropped away from her hands, giving her the air of a scholar. She held her hand over the blade, a small purple ball of light on the tip of her forefinger. Up and down the metal she ran it, her face wrapped with concentration. August stared into her eyes. They really were red, more on the pink side than the evil side. They certainly didn't look like anything natural. August dove into his green blood ability and checked her for a monster. She wasn't a false person. She wasn't a mother worry, either. What's your name? He asked, wanting to break the uncomfortable silence. The girl waited a few seconds, continuing her examination of the sword, and then flicked out a light on her finger. Elise. She said, curtsying. Somehow, it looked. Proper. August thought. Like a princess. Or a famous person. Though she's certainly not one I've ever heard of before. Elise scowled, and handed August his sword. You're staring at me. August blinked in surprise. That's because, well. He hesitated. You can say it. Elise twirled a piece of her hair around her finger. They were almost the same color, her skin, and her hair. Your eyes, August continued. They're red. Elise smiled. I like to think of them as rose-colored. August paused again. He looked around the room, at all the alchemist's tools, at the bottles and the books and the racks of stuff. You're that witch, though, aren't you? He asked. Elise tilted her head. What witch? You're not a witch? August asked, surprised. No. Answered Elise, definitively. Her red eyes crinkled at the edges, and she chuckled. You really thought I was one? Well. August answered. Now he was embarrassed, though he didn't know why. The townspeople. What townspeople? Elise asked. Her reaction was natural as if she hadn't known about them. The townspeople, over the hill, they said that their water was cursed. August was confused, now. He had first expected to see a monster, and then seen a witch, but the girl who looked to be so young in front of him couldn't be a witch. She didn't look like one at all. Elise's face became serious. Take me to them. Now. She pulled her cloak together so that it covered her entire body. She gripped a small piece of metal near her waist, and pulled up on it. A zipping sound cut through the room, one that sounded simultaneously like the tearing of cloth and the buzzing of a bee. The cloak wrapped around her, almost magically, and soon, only her two red eyes could be seen above her cheekbones. Lastly, she reached into a pocket in the cloak and brought out her black spectacles. But, she didn't wear them. She draped them over her neck attached to a pin in her cloak. When she was done, she turned to August. Lead the way, she said. I need to clean up my mess, 